The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And what do we have going on? Well, we're off 54 points. Um, as I said on Friday, uh, we had a lot of people shorting the market. Uh, and uh, every time they'd short, they'd just run it up a little bit more. Uh, my guess is we had some people go after it again, uh, not too uh, much after the open. Uh, I think those folks got run out. Um, but, you know, you've got a fairly weak market, but you have a few things. You've got fund buying that really kind of starts uh, today. I'm going to why fund buying is a series of days. I'm going to say it's more like a suggestion uh, than a rule. No one that I know has ever been sued or gone to jail for not buying on the first or last day of fund buying. It just says that we're going to, the best of our ability, be 100% long or 100% short this sector uh, for this fund. And it's uh, the job of the money manager to hedge that fund. So they've got to know that which way the, the uh, fund is going to move if things go well or things go bad. And it's their job to set up the hedges on those funds. So your job as a fund manager uh, is to make sure that you get the best uh, return possible. Uh, but at the same time, you take 100% risk. You're always fully invested. And eh, doesn't that just make you want to eh, make you, your hair stand on end? But there is a, a kind of a rhyme or reason on it. I don't know of anybody that's gone more than seven days into the new month without being 100% invested, but maybe it's happened. You don't hear a lot of that from the inside Wall Street crowd. But uh, almost all of them, if you go to the uh, charter for the ETF or the fund or whatever it is, it'll go in there. If you did and about 80, I'm going to say about 85% of them will have language that sounds just like this. We will be 100% invested the last two days of the first three trading days of the month. And in cases uh, where they think the market's going higher, they buy quicker on the front end. When there's a lot of risk, they wait until the very last minute, thinking that at least if something blows up, they got to buy it a little bit better. So they still have kind of a reason to try to make the returns as good as possible. But for the most part, they know that if most months they're paying up at the highest price or certainly a higher price than a couple of days before, just because everybody knows on the street that if you just hold your breath, prices are probably going to get better and they'll mark it up. And, uh, and of course, uh, was it Barnum or Bailey said, no sucker, never give a sucker an even break. And if you're in a 401 that has some kind of fund in it, uh, they're certainly uh, about as good as the, uh, uh, the mob was in siphoning off funds uh, from the Las Vegas casinos, uh, you're going to get cut. They're going to get their be uh, their uh, beak wet. But uh, by the end of this, so there's we've got two things. We've got a weak market. Uh, we've got people that are probably coming in with cash. So that's really, you know, when you're in an up market, you can generally bet on about 1.5% on the indexes by the time it's over on average. Uh, and, of course, averages are the old joke is the statistician who slept with his head in the uh, freezer and his feet in the oven. And on average, he felt just fine for the temperature. But, of course, his head was burnt and his feet were frozen or his 
Head was frozen. His feet were burnt. Anyway, depends on which way he decided to sleep that night. So as we're seeing here, we're off 65 points. Um, I want to, I, I, and I think what we're going to have is a fairly quick pullback to about 20, uh, 4250, which I think is kind of the support area. At that point, I think the uh, fund managers are going to say, let let loose the, uh, let what is it? Let slip the dogs of war. I don't know my Shakespeare. I'm more on a Longfellow kind of guy. But uh, 877-927-6648. Uh, had some information. I was going to talk about this earlier, but uh, I've seen 20 people talk about it on the news. None of them know what it is, apparently. Uh, and that's SWIFT. I thought it was very interesting. Um, there's a banking system. And that banking system doesn't transfer money around. Although that's what they'll tell you it does. It, it's kind of like that. Uh, for people that are uh, millennials or from Lutz, uh, it SWIFT is actually more like WhatsApp. It allows uh, two banks to securely talk to each other. And it defines a very specific message format uh, before SWIFT, there was a thing called Telex, and it could be anything. And there were a lot of confusions on it. And it would take four days because everybody was never sure that uh, what the, the order they got was exactly what the other side had meant. But since Telex, there's, a, uh, there's really what ends up being a bank account for both banks in each other's name. And it's actually got this kind of weird name called like Nostra, it's Latin. I don't know, Latin never took it. Uh, Vostra and no Nostra, I think that's what it was. It's been a long time since I've had to deal with this. Uh, but what happens is that they communicate kind of like uh, uh, the old Nazi uh, Enigma machine, uh, sending uh, uh, encoded messages back and forth. Uh, meanwhile, Interpol sits there watching all these messages to see who's sending cash uh, which way and there. Uh, the uh, trope or the uh, old chestnut in a lot of uh, CIA movies is them watching all this movie uh, money move around. And what they're watching is, of course, these messages in Swift. The message is not money. What will happen is that they will privately between themselves exchange cash. Now, some of the things that happen with SWIFT is that it will kind of act more like a exchange and that it will stand behind transactions that it knows to be true, which means that they'll run at the first sign of danger and say, you're screwed. Just like the uh, exchanges we have here in the United States for the stock market. So it's kind of like that. The difference is it's a lot more secure. Uh, it's standardized messaging for uh, exchanging money, but that doesn't truly get exchanged. Each bank has its own. Uh, I think the Latin actually reads one is mine and yours or something like that. It's kind of close to that. But anyway, uh, it's a replacement to really a secure teletype system. But uh, eh, I do digress. We'll be back in a minute. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And as we return, anyway, you know a little bit about financial systems. You don't have to know a whole lot. But uh, I ended up doing a lot of uh, business through SWIFT because we did business all over the world. I thought it was kind of interesting, especially when everybody started talking about it on the news. And I knew that they didn't know what they were talking about and didn't bother to learn what they're talking about. But, of course, getting rid of SWIFT doesn't do anything. Uh, those banks can always shift money between those two accounts they have on both sides of it. So I think a lot of people are maybe taking a little bit of a liberty with uh, what actually goes on. Uh, the real people that are going to be hurt uh, by this, if it, it does go through or if it has, I'm not exactly sure, would be anybody that's uh, kind of medium or small uh, or certainly individuals. Uh, the long guys, uh, they'll do what uh, the Iranians have done and the Russians have done too, uh, other pariahs of the world that is uh they'll just uh send a jet or they'll actually uh yeah they'll either send one or they'll have one come back with a load full of cash and just drop it off at the uh, airport um so it doesn't go through the swift system so is it a wall no it's an impediment uh so yeah we'll see what it does but certainly it does start to hurt at least the mid-tier part of uh uh, the economy of Russia, and uh, probably a good thing, as I said last week. And if they don't do that, they're not serious at all. But uh, eh, bureaucrats and uh, and uh, uh, that ilk um, like to talk a lot and do nothing. So we'll find out. Um, other things going on after the bell tonight. We've got Zoom, Lucid, uh, Blank, uh, Blunk, Blank, yeah. Uh, HPQ, uh, SDC Workday, uh, 3D Systems, Amberilla. Uh, probably see a little bit of action in Apple off of what Amberilla does. So keep a, a look at that. Tomorrow morning, we've got Target, uh, uh, Workhorse, or the lack of working. Uh, Baidu, um, AutoZone, uh, of course, uh, Coles, which is under uh, assault from uh, friendly takeover type folk. 
Uh, Wendy's, which may give uh, McDonald's a little bit of boost or lag out there. Uh, then we go into Tuesday night with uh, AMC, Sophie, uh, Wish, uh, CRM, probably the big one tomorrow night. Plug Power, um, what is that, Nordstrom's and Ross. So we get a little bit more of the retail um, uh, clothing business taste tomorrow night. So we'll see what goes in that and some more. But it is going to move the market more than the talk of war, the rumors of war or what else is going on, which I have no idea. I don't at this point, I'm at the I don't believe anything that anybody says, uh, especially in the press. Um, so I, I I'm just kind of sitting back because Generally, when everybody comes with uh, one message, which everybody does or is right now, there's generally more to the story. Uh, and as it applies to the stock market, I start to get and start to worry because generally when everybody talks one way and there's no dissent, yeah, I want to have a little dissent. I want to know where uh, the weak parts of the argument are uh, from the news because it's almost all propaganda. Speaking of propaganda, uh, in a case of uh, the uh, pot calling the uh, kettle black, Facebook says that uh, people in Russia won't be able to use its uh, its uh, system. And I thought it pretty hysterical because uh, probably nobody's done more uh, to uh, push false stories and actually restrict stories that are actually true uh, than Facebook and its demon uh, spawn CEO, Mark Zuckerberg. A little hyperbole, but not much. Uh, the incredible evil that this company has put on the United States and others. Uh, just a little doji out here, but uh, yeah, trying to get a little bit of vir uh, virtue signaling going, I think. But uh, I think I probably would shut up if I were them and had a uh, abysmal record for actually promoting truth and uh, uh, going after uh, lies instead of promoting lies and going after what we eventually found out was the truth. Uh, and again, I'll give it the uh, pot calling the kettle black award, uh, but uh, I do digress. Uh, what else do we have going on out here? A little bit of history. And then we'll go on to some charts. Just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 2002, uh, Disney CEO Michael Eisner testifies at a Senate committee hearing in Washington, D.C. on the protection of digital content from piracy. Eisner lobbies for more stern enforcement of copyright laws, claiming Apple's iPod advertisement encouraged copyright violations. Mix, rip, Burn. They can create a theft if they buy this computer. A little over three years later, of course, Eisner has uh, been replaced by uh, uh, Robert Igor. I still love that movie. Igor? Igor. Uh, who uh, quickly arranged the buyout of Pixar Animation Studios from Steve Jobs. This move makes uh, Steve Jobs Disney's largest shareholder and member of Disney's board, and a little less uh, out there going after uh, that, but it didn't change it much. It, uh, I guess it is a small world after all on this day in 2002. Uh, how quickly the t fortunes of war change. Uh, other things going on out here. Let's take a look. Uh, as I said, we've got a lot going on out here. Uh, probably the big one is going to be CRM. So I wanted to take a look at that, and then we'll get into some stocks that individually move. Give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, you can always email me at path at tfnn.com. Uh, okay. So you got a little doji out here. All you've done is gone back up uh, to where this uh, started to gap down on the 17th of February. Came down on 8.8 .8 million shares. You're up today on 4 million shares so far. So into the end of the world, no. Uh, but uh, you went down on 8 million shares on the 11th of February. You got a couple of gaps going back to that. It doesn't look good. Um, 
if you do find some kind of low, uh, there is a double gap at about 220. But uh, we shall see. I think that would be fairly stiff resistance if you're looking for a bounce uh, in the market. Uh, what's uh, the target on Tesla? TSLA. Uh, for me, it's been going down to 600 bucks. It's just, uh, if I can type it right, TSLA. It's just going to take a while. There's going to be a lot of noise. You got a, a nice oversold, uh, overshort bounce in this. But uh, we'll come back, I'll look at the expansion. But uh, 631 is kind of where I'm looking at. Uh, 630, kind of the uh, areas. Maybe as low as five. Yes. We return. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return, I'm going to vamp here just for a minute before we go to a phone call. But I did want to bring up, because uh, I'm downloading data, and I'm hoping that data actually shows up before we get on the line with this caller. We're down 67 points on the S&P cash. And yeah, we're kind of halfway through it now. So I was just downloading the latest data before we go to the uh, phone call with John from maybe... Philadelphia today. How are you doing today, John? Yes, yes, maybe. 
although I might be running. Uh, thanks for taking the call, David. Uh, I wanted to ask you, having uh, you having you now uh, had the uh, the time to examine the data from both last night's sell-off, the uh, selling into February 24th, in comparison to that that occurred Monday, January 24th. Um, lots of shorting, lots of put buying. I'm wondering if, as you assess that data on options and short selling, if in fact the market appears to you to be sold out sufficiently such that it's highly likely we chop uh, either head higher or chop around into uh, next Wednesday, which I think would be weird, Wally Wednesday, and the following week, which would be uh, quad witching and options expiry on Friday, March 18. Um. I think we've got a couple of things going on. In the very short term, we've got fun buying this week. Uh, a lot of people went very short uh, Friday morning. In fact, by the end of the day on the VIX, uh, we had a 58% put call ratio, which is historically over the last seven, eight years fairly high. I think we've gotten a high of 68 on some really bad days. But really anything about uh, above 40 starts giving a pretty good indication that you're probably going to go higher or at least not go lower. That everybody's starting to get on one side of the put call bus or boat. I'll use the boat analogy. I think it's better. So anyway, I'm showing on the screen here a the put call ratios that I put in my newsletter every morning. But yeah, we went from 39 on Thursday to 58. Uh, for a percentage on uh, Friday, and volume was about the same. So we had a, a, a little bit more of a shift to the bearish tone, which is actually counterintuitive. That means that uh, more people are shorting, which probably means that the market's going to go up in the very short term, a day or two. Generally, when people get really kicked in the teeth, they throw their they uh, throw the baby out with the bathwater pretty quick. So I wasn't surprised to see the exact same thing happen today. But a day or two, generally, that means that uh, those guys are probably going to see a lot of their premiums go away, and then they're going to come back, especially over the weekend. Uh, there's a real easy uh, trade to, to be had where they'll just suck all the premium out. Uh, plus, uh, the trade goes against them for a little while. And then uh, the market turns back to the way they were going to go anyway. So um, I'm done. Uh, I think your question here, at least, uh, um, what the options look like uh, for the spies, right? Yes, uh, and I just use uh, I just use spy as just a proxy for the entire market. Okay, I was trying to download them. I'm not exactly sure what's wrong. Here, Monday, February 28th, should be correct. Got spies, yeah. Whatever reason they didn't come out, let's see if we got any others, if it's just that one. No, did I do, I must have done something wrong here. See if we can, uh, if it's uh, showing Sundays. Now, I'll have to figure out during the break. I was trying to run the numbers, but from uh, Friday night, uh, they indicated a little bit of a bullish uh, uh, bias into um, the 18th. But, of course, the FOMC meeting is on the 16th, and I thought that they try to keep the market up and double-dog dare the Fed into uh, raising more than a quarter. Um, and, you know, if you have a – every time the market takes a big hit, of course, uh, the Fed's always the uh, – the whipping boy for doing that, and uh, the market doesn't like it, and the news blames them, so it's not very good. But um, yeah, um, my thoughts are that we could easily, in uh, the hyperbole of over the weekend or even the next day or so, go down to test 4250, and then try to go back up into this area. Gotcha. Very good, uh, David. Uh, just an observation. Uh, over the uh, vast many years, I have noticed 
when, uh, let's talk decline scenarios, when markets have declined into the first month of the new quarter and then mucked around or uh, jabbed around lows for uh, a good part of the quarter, there seems to be residual short covering buying into that quad which options expiry only because some group of players who uh, bought put protection into a decline early in the quarter hung on you know through the second month and said well okay fine i've lost my premium with uh, uh, time passing and so I'll just hang on until, you know, the first week of the, the third quarter, March in this particular case, and then finally give up the ghost and saying, well, gosh, you know, I paid 100% for an option, and it's, I've lost 90%. I'm just going to try to grab, you know, the last 10% and, uh, you, know, uh, you know, cut my loss to that extent, thereby leading to a um, uh, some sort of short squeeze phenomena into that quad which week, which this week, as you rightly point out, is also a, a FOMC meeting week. So uh, I'm looking at that and saying and asking myself the question, boy, I certainly wouldn't be, wouldn't be surprised if that continues the trend. Uh, this time around. Um, so I won't be surprised, but I'm loath to actually predict that. So I uh, was interested to hear your thoughts, and I appreciate that. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's going to be a tough one because you do have that FOMC meeting right two days before expiration. It's also quad witching uh, where everything expires. Those generally are very tough for anything I do with options on a grander scale. On individual stocks, sometimes there's a good edge, but generally on the market, there isn't because you've got so much going on with uh, uh, the futures that expire at 9.35 and the options that expire at the close. Thanks so anything much. else? Okay, thanks for the call. We'll be back after this. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Turn. Da -da 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 -da. I think we had somebody up here. Okay. I know somebody asked something. Uh, thoughts on ZM, which is Zoom, uh, with earnings coming out, as we said previously. Um, if it's doing a little ABC on the way down, uh, you've got a one-to-one -one at 93.30. I wouldn't be short going in here. Uh, probably the biggest thing to me is they've got not a huge short interest, but enough um, that would make me go, eh, I probably wouldn't want to be short this thing if they do any good. Uh, kind of mid last week, especially on the 23rd, you had a lot of people shorting this about 27%. It's been in the high teens most of the other times but uh you know in that 128 area you've got uh a lot of people short uh so what do we have here today yeah 130 so you got enough people um uh, that are probably short right at uh the level uh after the bounce uh question is whether they'll hold through earnings on that my guess is not but uh if they do I'd be more likely to think that you probably get some kind of bounce out of it. Um, you know, maybe it's a lot worse than I thought um, on earnings, so I'm not putting any money on it. But uh, certainly wouldn't be short. If you have some kind of inside knowledge, maybe there's a reason to be long. But I think that's pretty much it. But uh, decent shorting last week. Uh, and, of course, now that we've gone up a little bit. 877-927-6648. Uh, two, 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 okay. Um, anything stop crude or gold? I think gold could pull back here. I, I think that it's going to meander around, try to shake everybody out around uh, 1865, but it hadn't done that quite yet. But I think you get one more pullback and one more opportunity to buy. At least I hope I do. Um, 2K, other questions out here. Um, got a question on the SMHs. And, you know, the response uh, from the Western social democracies of Europe and uh, the U.S. was incredibly weak to the uh, invasion. Not much was going on. They all kind of uh, twiddled their thumbs. Uh, diplomats uh, are probably the number one uh, bunch of folks to fiddle why Rome burns. Uh, but again, fairly weak. I think it really, we had to see um, some stuff on television to get the politicians into gear. Um, some of the issues with, uh, like the swift thing with Russia, is that I think, if I saw the right article over the weekend, Goldman Sachs has about $5 billion at risk in Russia. And I think Morgan Stanley, $3 billion. So they're probably on the phone 
uh, to their friends in Congress and in the White House. Uh, really, you think we ought to do that? Eh, I don't think it'd be the best idea. Of course, uh, like I said, they got probably combined maybe eight or a little bit more billion dollars uh, invested in the gas station, the old gas station known as Russia. But, uh, eh, not much going on. Anyway, uh, probably the best thing that could have happened for the SMHs is uh, the... Uh, I'm going to call it a groundswell that even got uh, Germany to flip, who was staunchly against any more even lukewarm measures like SWIFT, uh, to the point uh, this morning that they're sending arms, uh, was a kind of an upswell from its uh, own citizenry. Same thing with uh, England. They're finally uh, getting on the ball and thinking that, uh, eh, we probably ought to back these guys or we're going to be fighting them at home a lot sooner rather than later. So maybe they've slowly woken up to the lessons of history, but I doubt it. I think they were dragged into the lessons of history. But the good thing about that is, and the response, the more it continues on and the more focus on uh, the invasion of Ukraine is probably Taiwan. Uh, if you're China sitting back, uh, kind of uh, a Maklovician uh, puppet master, really, for Russia to some uh, extent, uh, you're going, well, that didn't quite go as well as we thought it would. And we wanted to see how that went if before we invade on Taiwan. It didn't quite uh, look as good. Maybe we'll wait a little longer to do that. So while there's not a big move out here in the SMHs, I think it's more of the general economy. I think you could see uh, on a day where we're down 1.5% on the S&P and down three-quarters of a percent on the NASDAQ, uh, that the, the SMH is not getting smoked means that maybe there's a little bit uh, less thought that the risk to Taiwan now that there's actual a valid response from the Western democracies uh, that uh, we see here. Anyway, not much in the move. The volume's okay. Uh, I think you could still pull back a little bit, but the big blow-off, uh, unless something uh, happens even worse. But I think it's a, a, a market-wide thing. I don't think it's uh, just like it has been the thought that anything in the SMHs uh, could be uh, worth zero tomorrow if China invi uh, uh, invades Taiwan. I think there's a little less of that thought out there. So... Yeah, it's not good for the Ukrainians, but at least the response is probably a little weighted for Taiwan right now. 877-976-6648. Uh, okay. Let's see there. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, things going on in the near future. As we said, after the bell, we've got Amberilla. Uh, or is that tomorrow night? Can't remember. No, it's after tonight. So we're going to get a little bit of movement, probably in Apple on that. Uh, they make chips that go in a lot of these uh, smartphones uh, for cameras and action cameras and that kind of stuff. So you're probably going to get a little pin action with Apple and move that. Right now, it's just a doji on the day. What I would say is uh, time to start thinking about what happens next week with Apple. And that is, why how do I get up... Uh, I, uh, yeah. Come on, I know you. Yeah. Ah, there you go. I'm still getting a little used to Windows 11 on how to pop up the calendar. Uh, but anyway, uh, the 8th comes on a Tuesday. That will be a week from tomorrow if you live in Lutz. Uh, and uh, what is that day for us? That is the uh, dog and pony from Apple. And of course, uh, it hadn't done as well as it had in the past, but uh, even when the market when the market was weak and Apple probably should have gone down, they really haven't during the product announcements. Again, um, a week from tomorrow. So uh, just think about that and know that we're probably going to have a little bit of bounce in tech uh, as they talk up uh, a lot of new phone business. We'll be back in a
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis the tiger first mortgage program may be the program for you the best rate on a five-year cd in the country right now according to bankrate.com is paying one percent per year or one thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars invested the tiger first mortgage program pays seven percent per year paid monthly on secured high value buildable properties in saint petersburg florida the investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we get to re uh, fill out uh, the rest of the show, which is just about two minutes out here, again, uh, looking for a little bit of weakness by Wednesday, I think, maybe Thursday, we'll probably see a, a nice pop in the market, uh, but I think that's after we see some weakness. Uh, any fund buying will probably be late in the week. Again, that's the last two days of the month and the first three days of the next month. So really, that goes into Thursday. I, I just the history of fund buying has been wait until the last day or everybody else starts to go. So if you start seeing the market moving strongly higher, that's the fund money coming in. And then my guess is the next thing will be everybody starting to sell it. So I'm looking for some kind of, uh, if we hold up here, some kind of sell into that pop. Uh, ideally, if I wanted to go long, I'd want to see a return to 42.50 on light volume on this market, which would be enough of a pullback out here to see the low. And then a thrust up into FOMC and options expiration uh, the FOMC on the 16th and on the 18th. Uh, in technology land, as we said in the previous segment, Apple has its dog and pony next Tuesday. Uh, look for at least, uh, if the market's going up, look for it to go up more. 
Uh, if the market's headed down, look for Apple to try to hold everything up as it uh, continues to have new product announcements. Maybe they're good, maybe they're not, hard to say. Uh, but uh, that's it. Uh, in a headline-driven market, especially when you can't trust those headlines very much, uh, it is uh, okay not to have a position. Nobody's forcing you. You're not a fund manager. You don't have to buy like them. You can wait for the fat pitch, which is what I'm doing right now. Hang on for uh, Tom O'Brien. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat.